Welcome everyone to another one of our AIM Sports webinars, uh, something we do every live every last Tuesday of the month. Um, look forward to these a lot. Lots of lots of great information, lots of great interaction with uh, with users, and, and of course, then uh, when we we get done with these, if you're watching this later on on YouTube, we 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 do tape these the last Tuesday of every every month, and then. Um, put them out onto YouTube and we uh, lots of people see them and we get lots of questions and and, and further comments from those. So um, really, really enjoy doing these, uh, presenting different uh, topics and different things, um, doing only one a month compared to what we did when, the, you know, back during the pandemic. It uh, makes me wish that we had a, maybe a few more and, and there is some talk of maybe bumping these up too to uh, maybe a couple of months instead of just one a month because there's more topics now than uh, than we have slots to have these so so that would uh, that would be fun uh, what we're going to talk about today is a, is a is a new product from from aim that that um, is called the ACC or the analog can converter. Uh, it's it's close cousin to something that some of you may already have, which is the, the is the channel expansion that's been in the AIM parts lineup for a long time. But there's uh, there's some particular strengths to this, and I'm gonna let Chloe Chloe talk to that here in just a moment. But the so it's kind of does the same thing. It gives you some information, but there's a the reason that we have Chloe in here talking about it because of with her with her with her motorcycle background motorcycle cycle racing uh, background this is a very very popular product it is very small it is very compact and uh and, and the solo 2 dl which is a very popular product in in motor, motor motorcycle racing um uh, because of the size it's it's very it, it it's perfect for bike and the um and then this just gives us the addition for for that typical bike racer that wants uh, a, a few more channels that, that are not an ECU and non-GPS related. So I'll let her go into that in, in a little bit more, but, but keep in mind that, that, uh, with Chloe here, of course, with her uh, expertise being in, in the motorcycle side, uh, her examples are going to be that, but the, these ACCs work, um, uh, with, with other AIM devices and, uh, so all of the stuff she's going to talk about, uh, of course, goes across the platforms and, um, and, and different forms of motorsports. So if you have a, a solo two on a, uh, in your sports, sports racer or sports car, you, you, this, this product is available for you there as well. So just keep that in mind. And it's, uh, but, it, but it is kind of designed around the bikes and, and, uh, but there's a lot of people using them and other things as well. So let's keep that in mind, but a, a, a fairly new product has been very, very well received, uh, been working great. And uh, it's pretty, pretty cool what they're, what they're doing and providing for us uh, out of AIM Italy here. So with that, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit, um, um, Matt, Matt talked about it in the in the chat box there real quickly. Uh, Forty four by thirty eight millimeters. We're, we're talking a small box, uh, very very small, and weighs only fifty grams. So we're we're talking something that uh, is very lightweight, uh, very robust in what it can do. And uh, uh, Chloe will give us a lot more details on that. So we're going to jump back and forth a little bit to Chloe's screen and from my screen. So we'll have a little bit of that happening today. So that'll be fun. So uh, uh, with all that, I'd like to introduce uh, Chloe to our to 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 this webinar, Chloe. This is her sixth sixth webinar she's done with us, and um, uh, she's also uh, she, she's been sucked into the AIM infrastructure a little bit as well. You can see her out at the track and doing uh, uh, trackside support and wearing an AIM shirt uh, as much nowadays as well. But uh, but really, her core is um, is the day job and uh, as a performance engineer and 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 a winning race data engineer uh, that that's something that's uh, has come along now too she's uh, winning a lot of races in moto america as a data engineer um, doing all sorts of things so i'd like to like to introduce chloe have, tell, have her tell us a little bit more about you chloe but um, we're excited to have you here uh, for your sixth webinar with us uh, so looking forward to it chloe thanks roger uh, hi everybody I'm really glad that you're keeping tabs actually on the numbers of webinars because they Matt doesn't know, but there's actually a competition. <laughs> I'm afraid you got, you got a, a head start. Got you got a, you, head yeah, start. he's got a bit of a head start on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, as Roger said, I I have a day job. I'm a part-time performance engineer at Harley Davidson. I've been quite involved with uh, King of the Beggar, if, if anyone um, has seen those uh, gigantic road glides turned street uh, turned uh, race bikes. Uh, they're actually quite fast. Uh, it's pretty impressive and there's a lot of R&D going into it. It's been, it's been pretty cool. Um, 
I also do um, race data engineering at Moto America. So this year I started working for Team Hammer or also known as Vision Wheel M4X or Suzuki. And yeah, I got to uh, got to win my first race and then a couple more after that, I think four or five total, uh, taking second in the championship. So we're hungry for more and coming back next year. And uh, you might have seen me at club races, specifically at CVMA at Chocola in California during the winter series, where um, I'm usually there with the AIM van and supporting supporting everybody. I also do uh, support during Moto America as well, so you can always find me at the um, at the Suzuki tent uh, if you need any repair, any any tips or anything like that. Um, I've been in internal combustion engine research and development for about 12 years now. I've been working with engine dyno uh, primarily. Um, have uh, a degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Wisconsin Madison. I went away and then came back to Wisconsin, and uh, I can happily report that it is snowing, or it was snowing this morning. <laughs> and uh, maybe you can hear it by the accent. I'm not from here. I graduated, um, well, I grew up and graduated from engineering in France uh, before I came over here to work on engines. And um, hasn't been the case for the last year or so, but I've also been dabbing and racing a little bit myself. I Perfect. mostly like building the bike. Perfect. I, I knew you had a, a, a an accent. I, I, and I assumed it wasn't the you know, southern part of America, but maybe the southern part of France, right? The uh, <laughs> quite a different, yeah, quite a quite a different uh, accents between those two different areas. Yeah, but thank you, Chloe, for uh, for for what you do, and thank you for joining us here today and the times in the past, and and uh, doing all the work that you do with the with the customers out there that are uh, that uh, need some help. Uh, uh, you know, few questions answered here or there it's a uh, it's helpful to have somebody that understands and speaks their language a little bit more right um, while data analysis and data you know the pushing together of the parts and the products uh, does go across to all the different forms of motorsports um, the folks that are inside of a certain type of motorsports uh, the, they really would like to chat with somebody that understands exactly what they're doing with it so that's very very helpful obviously so what, what are we going to talk about today is, is the ACC, either the analog to CAN converter. And we're going to, um, we're going to go into, we're really going to take two, two paths in this. Uh, my, uh, yes, uh, Emiliano is doing it. There's a bunch of links today that you're going to see in the chat box. So if you don't have your chat box open, go ahead and, uh, and open that. The, this presentation material is, uh, has been all uh, crunched into a PDF and then zipped. And, and the link is there for you to download if you want this for later, uh, including um, uh, probably 10 or 15 other links that'll be uh, included there. For those of you that are not are watching this later on YouTube, uh, down in the description box below is all of those links. So if we mention something or you the data that Chloe is going to use and demonstrate some of the stuff she has is available to you. Uh, the um, uh, as well as the user profile, the math channels, everything that she's going to show is available for you to download and uh, and and uh, and recreate what we're doing. Watch this and then and then play along with uh, with the actual data that she has uh, provided. So we're going to talk hardware, and we're going to talk about bringing it all together, and then we're going to jump out and uh, we're going to look at a couple of. Uh, uh, screens of, of analysis and then jump out to analysis as well and uh, and do some live work with with all of this just to show you kind of what the data may look like inside of uh, inside of Race Studio 3. So there's where we're, uh, uh, Zach has a question that just popped up that is perfect. Uh, is the ACC only compatible with the Solo 2 DL? It's, uh, nope, it's compatible with all of the AIM, AIM product line. Uh, but to get into your question just a little bit more, let's say the Solo the Solo 2 uh, does not have the, the CAN port, right? So you, we, it has to have the, the AIM CAN connection. So of the Solo 2 or the Solo 2 DL, it does not work on the Solo 2, but it does work on the Solo 2 DL and all of the other AIM products. So it uh, we, we can put that across the board. So- But it's uh, it's mostly a novelty on the Solo 2 DL because the, the DL was the, the one unit that was not open to analog sensors. And I think that's sorry. really the- yeah, and if you if you if and if you've um, it, it, those of you that are watching that now or or later, if you think your Solo Two DL still is uh, 
limited by that uh, with a firmware, a free firmware update, you uh, you can connect the ACC to your Solo 2 DL. So that is a very, very powerful upgrade that uh, that AIM has made available for you. So I'm going to I'm going to leave that up to um, uh, Chloe here to chat about that a little bit, uh, and we'll start on we'll start on this slide, and we'll kind of go from there. So Chloe, I'll turn it over to you. I'll run the slides and uh, and and let you tell tell us a little bit about the ACC. Sounds good. Well, I'm I'm going to start with saying that uh, when we were at PRI last year, and um, I think you guys showed me the the first prototype for the ACC. I was I was extremely excited because it's something that. In the world of motorcycles, that's something that we've really, really been uh, looking forward to, uh, because it's not always easy to uh, swap a native dash for a name dash. For example, there's a there's just a, a lot of a lot of embedded functions in most motorcycle dashes that um, just will not let us do that, or not easily at least. And a lot of people have solo two DLs just because it's it's very com compact. It fits in your purse, which is very important for for aim in Italy. Um, and it's an inside joke, but uh, it's it's been it's been one of the most common product that we have. That's what I fixed the most at the track, and the fact that we can now expand to not only ECU data but also um, analog sensors is uh, is probably yeah the most exciting um, upgrade that uh, that AIM has brought up this year. So the ACC uh, plugs into your CAN port or the one that you use, you use for um, for charging on the Solo 2 DL and is open to up to four sensors. So here we can um, we can see that we have two potentiometer and it also shows uh, temperature and pressure, pressure sensors. In, in, our, in the case of motorcycles, we usually have a front and rear potentiometer and front and rear brake pressure sensor. And that really gives you most of everything that you need. But because of the CAN, the AIM uh, CAN native system, you are not only limited, you're not limited only to um, to the ACC and the sensors, you can also have an LCU-1 for wide range Lambda. Um, and you can, you can also have a smart ECAM and all of that will go through um, a data hub, which will plug into that uh, CAN part on the Solo2DL and, and give you access to all of those, um, all that data, which is uh, really more than, than what, that what people need actually, um, and then um, and then you also have which you've had before uh, the ECU ports uh, on the Solo 2 DL, which gives you all of your ECU data. Given uh, granted that you have a protocol for it, uh, so really it's we've I've talked about it in previous webinars where we were talking about the different steps that you could take during your uh, your data analysis career or experience, um, and you often would start with a solo two and then just start learning the, the GPS based data and just look at it for your lab time um, and then expand with a solo two DL. And then once you were uh, familiar with uh, GPS data plus ECU data, the next step was to, ex to essentially upgrade to either an EVO 4S or five or a full dash system, um, which is a lot more involved and takes a lot more um, I want to say just, just set up and and um, uh, just real estate on your motorcycle for the case of the motorcycle. Um, and the Solo 2 DL right now with the ACC just allows you to just shortcut that step and add the sensors to uh, to something that most people already have. So yeah, very, very excited about this. And I think I'm really aiming towards using this presentation as a tutorial on how to set it up and how to use the ACC data. Perfect. Ready for the next slide? There we go. Talking about hardware setup. Some, uh, so we, we all like to see pictures and how things are uh, actually uh, attached. So this is a, some good examples for you to talk about. Exactly. So this is the case of a motorcycle that's fairly new. It's an XSR 900R because of the conversion. And, uh, and it's a 2023 bike. So there is no um, there is no specific protocol for it. There is only, uh, we're using the OBD2 protocol. And so it's a, it's a motorcycle where some functions are embedded in the dash and it's not specifically easy to just do a, do a dash swap. So here we have, um, we have the Solo2DL that's mounted on the triple uh, clamps 
uh, with a really cool case that uh, by JMR Design uh, designed for it with uh, with the attachment included. I will have a link in um, in this presentation. Um, and you can see in the middle picture the the wires that the cables that are running to the ACC and really this the second circle here shows you how small the ACC is. So it's um, there is a a bracket for the ECU and we set it up right next to the ECU on top of the airbox. Um, it it's really light, doesn't take any space. We could have put it in the front fairing as well. It's uh it's it's very useful having it centrally mounted is um, is useful so that we can also reach the rear potentiometer on the shock, which we don't have in, in this case. Um, so in this in this specific example, we have uh, mounted the potentiometer obviously on the front fork. You can see it in uh, both pictures uh, left and the right. Um, mounts that are also provided by, by JMR Design, which are pretty universal and, and very easy to use. Um, and then uh, this really neat, uh, very simple to to add a brake pressure sensor that is mounted on core moto brake lines, uh, which actually come with uh, a, pr a brake pressure sensor adapter, uh, which which has been really 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 easy to uh, to order and set up. So um, in this case, we already had the solo two DL on this bike. It was used as a lap timer. We were just logging basic um, ECU data, and really having the addition of um, the front potentiometer in this case and the uh, brake pressure sensor uh, just added a ton more channels and or a ton more channels, just a ton more understanding of what the inputs are. Um, and maybe I would say the the installation took a couple hours between running the lines, opening, um, removing the tank, and setting up the the ACC under the airbox on top of the airbox. Um, so extremely simple, very compact. And, and pretty powerful um, as far as the data that it gives you. I am always thankful that uh, we have companies out there. It, it, we've given a couple of examples here with the, the brake lines from, from Core Moto where they will build in the, the, uh, the ability to plug in that pressure sensor. That that is always a part that your 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 typical. If it was me sitting in my my workshop, putting in a in a brake pressure sensor, that's a it's kind of a core part to the bike, right? And and it needs to be done right, uh, or the car, the race car, whatever it is that we're working on, and having somebody that has built a brake line that then has that uh, has that port where you can uh, you know um, correctly install the the pressure sensor uh, makes installs of 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 our aim products so much so much easier same thing with the potentiometer marks uh potentiometer mounts and the the solo 2 dl mount anybody that is uh, well is building these things you know i'd like to share that uh by jmr builds these these pieces where you can buy these things and as a and or as a kit and and bring it home and like you said within a couple of hours you have this thing set up and and, and off and running that's a whole lot easier than having to break out the grinders and the welders and the and the different things and start building mounts and and, and all that we live in a good time for things like this or the you know the the you know, printing of uh, of these products some of us don't have those printers so fantastic that uh, these things are available to us so i appreciate that if you go back to maybe the slide before, something that is cool to point out. So the ACC comes with uh, with its own mini or integrated harness. So you can see it uh, it has four uh, binder pigtails that are coming out. Uh, it's it's actually the length is actually pretty well designed for a motorcycle. In this case, where uh, you can set the ACC in a fairly central location, like we have it on the airbox, and then. And and then run or reach uh, to the front uh, potentiometer and brake pressure sensor, and maybe you just use a, a simple extension for for the rear. So it's been it, it's just a really well thought product. It's my understanding that uh, in the when you go to order your ACC, you, you the these can be at different lengths as well, right? Uh, they can have. I think there's one of them that is the two of the flying leads are not flying leads, but the bender connectors on the ends are longer to get to the back of the bike, and two can be shorter. I think the default one is they're all four uh, the same length, but I there is some uh, uh, some options for you depending on I'm how you're mounting it. it. Yep. Okay. So are you done with the, this slide here, Chloe? Yep. Okay, let's let's talk a little bit about the. Okay, we've talked about hardware and we've talked about getting looking at it on the bike. Of course, uh, your your race studio, your your solo DL needs to understand that there's something that's plugged into it. It's not truly plug and play. There's a couple of things you have to do. So Chloe's going to talk about having adding that uh, ACC to the configuration. 
So yeah, I like to say it's it's plug, click, and play. Exactly. Um, so in, in this case, it's uh the ACC is part of the the expansion, the can expansion uh drop down menu that uh where you would find your LCU one, for example. Um and so when you open your your configuration, you have the normal channel ACU, um ECU stream and can expansion. Um tabs and so within within the can expansion tab you can find the acc you just have to add it uh when it is plugged in you can get the uh the expansion serial number and then you have access to those four acc channels that you can set up um so in that case i mentioned we only have the the front suspension and the uh and the front brake pressure sensor um you have now the ability which we've, which we've had for quite a while to set up a function and then you, you'll have your drop down menu where you can set up your, um, or you can select uh, which sensor you have, uh, set up the units, and then set up the sample rates. One of the other things that's really interesting, I get a lot of questions from folks, whether it's a, a solo 2DL or or another product, and they they what what is available to me, and um, and it's kind of funny, but uh, one of the things I I just share with people is if you if you have a a piece of hardware, in this case, a solo 2DL, and you're wondering what is available to me, literally just go into the software, click on the new expansion. The software is smart enough to know what what is available to you. So if you've got some some piece of hardware or you're wondering if if you can do more than one of these ACCs or something, uh, if, if it only allows one, which is what, uh, the way I understand it, uh, the solo 2DLs only allow one ACC. Uh, when you went to add a second expansion to just go into the software, click on it, and it it's not available to you. So using the software in ways like that, pretty good way of uh, understanding what it can do. So, OK. So and perfect. another note is, uh, so I, I put a little note on top there. If you have a solo 2 dl or solo 2 dl v2 and, and an ACC, make sure to update your firmware to uh, the latest the latest firmware version that uh, that we've had as of a couple of days ago. Andy asks, uh, perfect. The always, always um, uh, latest firmware is always probably your best bet, especially on a product that is that is fairly new coming to uh, different pieces here. We, we, uh, our, our friends in Italy are, are updating things fairly quickly. So make sure you get the, the latest firmware. Uh, Andy asked the question, what's the maximum uh, possible data rate on these things? Chloe, do you have a, you have a good handle yeah, on that? Uh, we can, we can have as high as 200 Hertz um, for four channels. So it is not at the level of a full, Evo 5 or a full dash. I mean, it, I think it's good to keep in mind that it's still an intermediary, intermediate uh, options or solution. Um, and that somebody who really wants to get deep into um, extremely high quality data, is like extremely fast, simple rate, and, and a num high number of sensors uh, will probably be looking to looking at a dash or looking at a PDM or looking at um, the Evo 5. But this is really a it's it's a solution for expansion based on the solo two DL, which um, which is a good step towards you know something a little bit more complex. And while and while some 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 from the engineering mindset may really want you know five hundred samples per second or a thousand thousand hertz uh, on certain things, but the two hundred hertz window is really this kind of the sweet spot for the typical weekend racer of a of a, of a bike like this, or even uh, a, a sports car that's that's adding a, a, a suspension sensor. Uh, we have to take it all and convert it to um, to CAN and bring it across. Uh, so they're trying to keep that uh, that data stream a little thinner as well. So so that there is a reason why it's limited to 200. And and if you need something else, like Chloe says, the there's other devices if you really want to get into some deep stuff. So okay, perfect. You ready to go on to the next slide? Yep, go for it. Okay. Race Studio 3 setup, selecting the proper sensors. Let's talk a little bit about how to set up once you get it there to, uh, to, to configure these four channels that are now available to you with your ACC. Yeah, exactly. So this, this slide is really intended to be a, a practical reference for whoever decides to move to an ACC with a motorcycle. Um, and I just wanted to bring uh, people's attention to the fact that now AIM offers uh, the new Eclipse potentiometer. So some people might have the legacy, what we call the active potentiometer, which is the, the picture on top. 
Uh, but most of the things that we now offer are the um, are the eclipse potentiometer, which are um, full carbon body and and ext extremely lightweight. Um, so when you set up your when you set up your sensor and decide to start, let's say with a suspension, um, two things that are pretty important. First is uh, selecting the proper uh, function. So why is the function important? Is because now it will actually facilitate some of the some of the functions in um, race studio three analysis. So let's say um, we get to the version that has the automated window for uh, suspension analysis. If you've determined prior in the configuration that the, the sensor that you have or front and rear potentiometer, um, it will then automatically populate these in the in, in the dedicated window in, in race studio three. Um, and it will be even more useful uh, later on for shared y-axis and, and things like that. Um, it's also very useful when you have um, data that you want to actually uh, compare with a friend. So if your friend named its, uh, its suspension front, let's say, uh, Ford, which we often see, versus uh, my naming convention, which is always suspension F, um, the fact that you determine a function Will allow you to use your same layout and uh, compare compare data right away. You won't have to bring the the different channels and and look for them. Uh, so it's it's just a simple couple of clicks at the beginning, and uh, it's really useful in the back end for the analysis. The other thing is the is the type of uh, sensor. So AIM Eclipse is what you need to use for the the new Eclipse, and it actually uh, populates a window. Uh, little little GUI at the bottom uh, where it asks you to put the uh, the full length. So you have a little GUI of the uh, of the potentiometer, and it also asks you to uh, set up the sign whether you want um, fully open to be 150 or fully closed to be 150. In, in this case, uh, if you are using the old style potentiometer, it's uh, you want to choose either the autocal or the the manual calibration. And so with the auto calibration, what you do is just set the, the maximum travel, um, and then you'll be able to use the, the auto calibration function in both cases um, in live measures. In I the built, case I, of- I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I built some, they're, they're not specific about bikes, but uh, it's one of the more po um, popular downloads that I get asked about. I've created a, a number of PDF files that are that I think are linked. Uh, I, I think uh, Emiliano and Matt may have, uh, them available to to link into the document here, but they're um, they're how to con how to calibrate, configure and calibrate steering, brake, and suspension, and it walks you through. and It's not bike specific, but it but it uh, will answer some of those questions as well, and maybe talk about what all of those different boxes that we're looking at. And we're going over fairly quickly here today. There, uh, those are uh, the kind of explained a little bit better in those documents, and we'll have those linked in the chat and linked in the, for those watching later in the uh, YouTube description. And Matt made a comment that they are non-contact potentiometer and have some built-in uh, diagnostic features, the, the Eclipse, uh, which is really good. And they're actually cheaper than the, the old style yeah. potentiometer. What's, um, what's important to note for motorcycle racers that might consider racing in super sport in Moto America is that the Eclipse are not yet compatible with the Mectronic ECU, but they will be. They're working on on integrating them. They're they're just they work differently than the uh, than the simple analog um, sensors. So, they the Medtronic and uh, and I think Emiliano are in touch and they've they've been working on it. Um, yeah, very very cool new sensor that uh, that AIM uh, built by AIM in Italy and uh, very very powerful and very uh, very very cool and cheaper as you as you mentioned that's uh, that's amazing. And yeah, so shock position for for this we choose the maximum rate, which is two hundred hertz, and it's it's usually what I use um, in all of my systems. Um, in in very few occasions will I go to five hundred hertz uh, when I need to uh, troubleshoot something very specific on the on the chassis. Um, and so if you're looking at the now the brake pressure sensor, so usually I choose uh, fifty hertz. I this one is in psi, but I usually choose bar. Um, and in the drop down menu, there are a lot of sensors. So it can be a little bit overwhelming trying to find 
which is yours, but at the top, um, and it's kind of hard to read in here, but at the top are often the uh, the aim one. So all the sensors that start in X O um, five, I believe, or X something are um, are the aim sensors. Yeah. Um, and then and then you have different brands that are at the bottom. So if you if you have a name sensor, it's usually going to be at the top of the list. Yeah, and and if you had any custom sensors, they would just show right there at the top of the list as well. The um of those of you that are that are watching the the screen, and it's not and it's not all that great of a. Uh, coming across Zoom, it's uh, it's the first time we've ran into this problem. But if you uh, really want to see that uh, later, the the PDF that we've um, um, created from the the presentation materials are very clear. So if you if you download that and open that up later, you can see uh, all the technical details we're talking about here. Okay, what is next, Chloe? Is uh, is the next uh, slide, or do we jump out? Let's jump out to okay, uh, practical example. Uh, She's going to jump into her race studio three. I'm going to stop the share of mine. She's going to jump in and open hers and share her screen. And uh, and we will get into some hands-on stuff here. So that'll be nice. Yeah. All right. There it comes. It's coming. Right here. And there, right. yep, we see you. And you That's are it. off and running. So just to show a practical example, the uh, slow to dlxsr is what we're talking about. Um, so this hasn't changed. We still have all of our channels um that are selected for you know all the gps based or, or solo 2 dl based uh channels i always um unselect the uh uncheck the rpm because i'm getting the rpm through uh through the ecu so in ecu stream you have the ability to choose uh which ecu you're using in this case it's a 2023 bike um and there have been uh there has been an effort to commonize all of the bikes and they now all have access to they all broadcast the OBD2 um, uh, protocol which, with very simple channels. Uh, but in our case, it's really everything that we need. Uh, we have the RPM, we have the vehicle speed based on the wheel speed, uh, throttle uh, TPS, so the, the throttle uh, plate load, and then the PPS, which is the pedal position, or in this case, the, the twist grip position, and various uh, temperatures. The meat of what we're talking about is right here in the expansion. So you have all of your all of your expansions. In this case, we only have the ACC. But it, let's say if you had um, the uh, the lambda the lambda LCU one module, it would show up here as well. So add your expansion. Select your ACC whenever you're uh, connected through Wi-Fi uh, to your to your solo to DL or uh, AIM logging device um, and your ACC is plugged in, then you can get the expansion serial number. In this case, I'm not connected, so we'll not see it. Um, and then what I was <clears throat> showing, maybe we'll see this in a little bit better quality, um, but now you have your drop down menu for function. So for motorcyclists, the fact that we're calling uh, suspension shock position may be a little bit um, confusing, but this is what you're looking for. So. Uh, you go to position, which is what you're looking for, um, and then shock position or position is um, what you're looking at for uh, for potentiometer. Uh, and then if you select shock position, keep in mind that it's been designed for cars, so you get to choose if it's the front, the rear, the left, or the right, <clears throat> or even, I don't know what you guys will use these for. The left and the right, but I'm sure there is a there is a, an application. But anyway, you identify uh, whether it is the front or the rear uh, suspension channel, and then, like I said, the Eclipse. If you have some um, uh, user defined uh, sensors, it would show up here on top of the bar. If not, you have your basic uh, uh, built in. Uh, selection section of item. So the M Eclipse for the new sensor and the usually the position pot autocal for uh, for the older sensors. Unit of measure, which is now also embedded in RS3A. Uh, no, sorry, the display precision is now in RS3 analysis or will be shortly. And then, like I mentioned, just select selectable um, full travel. Looking at Brake pressure, we have what I mentioned, all the 
um, all of the options for uh, for the aim sensors at the top. So X05, uh, PSA are the aim sensors. And then um, I think Matt mentioned that all of the PRs also have the same, uh, same calibration. So make sure to choose the right range, the right unit. Uh, that's pretty important for the zero to five volt um, transfer function. And uh, yeah, and then that gets you all the way there. Unit of measure, display precision, uh, which again is in RS3A. And uh, yeah, let's see if you were to choose another one. Let's say we want to do the suspension rear. It is not a voltage function, it is a position, shock position is going to be the rear. And then we're choosing the eclipse. We want it to be at 200 Hertz maximum. I want it to be in millimeter. And then it is a 75 with uh, fully open at, uh, when it's fully open like this. And safe. And there we go. Um, then, I mean, it is as simple as what we've done before. Save your configuration. And then once you're connected, transmit it. It's funny, but there's a, there's a, uh, I've had more than a handful of calls where people have, have done the full configuration setup in Ray Studio 3, and then they're not understanding why it didn't work, and they uh, they just missed that last step. So when Chloe says uh, it's as simple as save and then and then transmit, make, make sure you do that transmit part. I personally even have done, made that, uh, made that error. So keep that in mind. Yep. So... All right, I will give it back to you. Okay, let's let me stop your share and then I will share if my I screen and we'll time. jump back in and we're gonna talk a little bit about Ray Studio 3 analysis at this point of, okay, so we've kind of, we've talked a little bit about the, uh, uh, the uh, let's do that and then share this one. See. Oh, there we go. I, I finally just did it for you, I think. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Ray Studio software and 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 what's what's interesting about this on the analysis side is you've got this ACC that we've just connected and we, we it, it's no different than any other channel once you're in here right so but we wanted to go in and spend just a little bit of time uh, talking about some analysis and some of processes that Chloe has built and, and different ways of looking at the data uh, from motorcycle data, including this uh, ACC data, which I believe was just gathered uh, it, just in the last few days. So uh, pretty current data. And this is data. We're going to look at it in a, in a couple of screen captures here, and then we're going to go out and watch some live data on Chloe's screen. Uh, this is the data that's available for you as a uh, as a gift from Chloe uh, that uh, you can download. The link will be in the in the webinar chat or it'll also be in the description below later if you're watching this on YouTube. And also the user profile that uh, Chloe has set up here. If, if you want to uh, download that and import it into your Race Studio 3, it's something else for you to, to uh, another way of looking at data and maybe adjust it to something that fits for you. It's always good to have other people's user profiles to uh, to to see how they look at data and how they set things up. So, Chloe, let's talk a little bit about uh, how this is set up and what we're looking at here, and then we'll jump out to your live screen. So here, really, what I wanted to highlight is the fact that you now have um, data from from three different sources. So you have your GPS based data, which you've always had before, with the the GPS speed, which all AM devices give you. Um, your RPM, which comes from the ECU, and which you can which you can use to get your um, your gear position if it's not available through the ECU, um, the pedal position or the actual twist grip position. Uh, and it didn't put it here, but you also have um, the actual throttle plates position, which helps you, uh, you know, like determine your ETV uh, maps if you want to if you want to reward them. Um, and no, actually, the be the behavior of the the vehicle or the engine, um, the brake pressure uh, in this case for the front um, that is that is coming from the analog source uh, converted to CAN through the ECC, um, the lean angle, which is really important for us in motorcycles, uh, which is a GPS based math channel. The the math channel, which I will provide uh, in the links, 
but it's also um it's also a function that uh, is provided in aim or so you just have to basically drop the the um the gps speed and gps gyro channels that you need um and then the suspension front uh, that is also provided by the acc so let's go that to the next one Perfect. And this is where I talked earlier that um, you're going to see um, suspension velocities. Uh, this is this new suspension uh, function, soon to be unlocked in, in production if, uh, if it's something you're interested in. Uh, it is available right now in, in the beta software. How are you using this and, and, and setting all this up, uh, Chloe? Talk a little bit about this. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's the, um, the frequency analysis is not yet available and not really yet. Uh, mature for, for use. But what I really like to look at when I'm building my suspension uh, layout, we'll call it a layout or user profile, um, I first have to calculate my suspension velocity. So you simply take the derivative of the uh, of the suspension position, uh, which also provide. And that allows you to look at your velocity histogram. So um, the histogram will just give you an idea of your high speed, low speed rebound and compression and distribution of, of it. Uh, so it's usually a really cool snapshot snapshot to look at, um, just to see, to have a, a general idea of how your bike is set up. Um, and then once you've identified maybe a little bit weird regions like here where it's not fully balanced, um, it helps you then go into your time-based data to look for um, where you might have stiction or where you might have like too fast of a rebound, for example. Uh, so I also like to have my suspension position uh, shown uh, at the bottom like this, so I can zoom in and out. And it's really cool. I'll show you. I'll show it in the um, in the live data, but you can zoom in on your position, and then your your suspension uh, histogram will actually just adjust. Um, so it. This, oh, go ahead. The, uh, I was just gonna mention as we get ready to jump into some live data, Emiliano just mentioned in the in the chat that um, uh, you, men you mentioned that you need to take the derivative of your suspension travel to get to the velocities. And uh, one of the things Emiliano has been working on is, to, is an automated process. So you don't even have to do that math channel anymore. It, uh, the, the derivative is being applied and you're getting a, a velocity. Uh, uh, are already built for you in Race Studio 3 nowadays. So that's pretty handy. Yeah. So and this this layout might look a little bit different and it's a little bit um more I like uh, it. If I want to say advanced but more custom, uh, where I have different uh quadrants. So I have I've added a section over here and I've added a section at the bottom so I can I can show how to do it. Um yeah. we'll and look at just, it in live data as well. Yeah, actually, okay. let's, uh, let's move there. Do that. Let me stop yeah. my share, and you can start a share of the live data itself. And we can t check out a couple of other looks of of uh, that upper right box that we were looking at. It actually gives us several different options that are just clicks away. So yeah. there you go. We do see your screen. Show us a little bit awesome. about that. So just starting here, I know that I usually have a lot of questions about um, how to show yeah, the yeah. bike pressure. It's it's been a, it's been a staple of my presentations now I think but it it's really it's really useful and I think it's nice to have the continuation of um you know like it it's a lot more graphic and a lot more uh, a lot easier to picture when you have you roll out the gas and then go straight to the um to the brake and just looking at your your brake pressure uh, shape is is quite it's quite good uh disclaimer it's not my data is I'm a lot slower than that and I don't ride that well so <laughs> I will give to you uh, somebody else who's a little bit better. So um, just looking at the brake pressure, um, the simple uh, bit that you have to to do to, to just turn it upside down is just uh, multiplied by minus one. Uh, so you have this really easy box right here uh, that lets you do it. Uh, so if I do. Yeah, that A box right there has a has a one in it when you first open it up. So all you have to do is right. add the minus sign and it inverses the brake pressure. She mentioned it really quickly there that the, the green and the and the red lines, uh, the green, of course, being the throttle and then the the red one right below it is brake pressure. And which makes it really easy. And, and if you look, uh, there's a couple very small spots there. Uh, but if if those lines are connected, there is no coasting, there is no transition. It's mm -hmm. it's you're going straight from throttle on to brake on. But if there's not a if there's a disconnect between those lines, very very quickly your eye will will understand that there was a delay 
in the exactly. in, in a bit of it a helps coast. You identify there, there's the perfect spot North right there. Yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. Perfect. Exactly. Um, another thing that I've been asked several times, or, or I've had people coming to me saying that they can't see their data showing up. Um, it it often happens. So let's say if I if I were to just rescale this with the uh, positive value, everything basically goes away. In some cases, you can't see you can see your data. A simple double click will just redo an auto scale on the simple double click on the y axis. We've had uh, several so. webinars in the past from other folks, and Jeff Wasilko mentions it in the in the chat. There are a lot of people that uh, just do an inverse brake pressure channel as a normal math channel, so they leave their brake pressure alone, mm -hmm. and they have a separate a second one that is just their inverse brake pressure, and it's it's the one that they put into their user profile. So instead of modifying it in that box, uh, they can have one that's just modified all the time. That it's something that they can apply to every event they or every session they download. So, and I, I do that I do that sometimes because yeah, exactly. it's nice to have a driver's page in this case like this one where you have the the basic uh, channels but whenever I'm looking at um, the suspension channel I don't have that much space <laughs> and sometimes I like to have brake and uh, throttle at the bottom of the page so I can I can see uh, you know like maximum brake pressure leading to maximum um, suspension uh, travel for example and I like to correlate the two so I don't have that much space and so I have to put both of them on the same graph and it's usually better when the brake pressure is positive. That's the power of Race Studio and having the, the multiple tabs across the top and multiple user profiles. It's whatever works for you as the user and 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 other folks as well. Peter even mentions he likes to see the bog the the color change in your RPM uh where mm -hmm. where the where the low RPM or a bogging of the engine. So that's kind of right. interesting too. Yeah, yep. that's, that's also pretty nice. So for that uh we can simply do go to your RPM channel and then set a minimum and a maximum. So let's say this is actually a different bike that revs a lot lower. So let's say 10,000 RPM, just for fun. Um, apply it, exit, and then what's orange, we're gonna put it in a different color. And now you can see um, every time that you're over revving, I forgot exactly what the rev line is on this uh, on this XSR, it's a, it's a three cylinder. So it's, uh, it's probably like 11, yeah. um, but you can easily now see um, the over -rev. And it's, this is actually a function that we use a ton, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sp specifically for, um, you know, the technical director of Moto America, whenever they're looking at uh, King of the Bagger uh, data because they're rev limited. A lot of people use it at the top uh, on the rev limit, but uh, P Peter's mention and you having it set up that way shows the importance of even having it on, on the bottom. A lot of people don't use mm -hmm. that. Uh, should I have downshifted in that uh, that corner? If you have a one corner where you're seeing this minimum uh, gone too low uh, several times, it's nice to have it jumped out as well. Yeah, and uh, if you want to change the color, so for example, you always like to have your RPM in a certain color, like all the colors are right here in the option, in the little spark and a little gear here. Um, so I like to have the dark mode, but then if you have um, things like report min and max, you have all of your colors there. Yep. So that was good to have. And those are all saved in the user profile. When you've saved a, a user profile, all of those color settings are saved there. So it's very yeah. nice. And Matt, Matt mentioned it's really good to have for engine health parameters. So if you're monitoring your uh, your coolant temperature, your engine temperature, it's really good to have those alarms because you can very quickly see uh, when when that happens. Um, and something, I mean, we're, we're getting down in the weeds now, but something that I really like to do is also having a flag channel uh, that shows, that computes the time spent above a certain RPM or a certain temperature. And then you can do the lap integral of it and it tells you how many time, how much time per lap you're spending above that uh, that limit. Yep. So just the, the beauty of AIM math channels. Yep, exactly. So uh, looking at the suspension analysis. Um, so here, this is the, this bit right here, you can actually go through uh, frequency, histogram and the different channels. Um, like Emiliano said, once you'll have identified, once this is mature and you'll have identified your, uh, your front shock position and rear shock position, it will compute, it will calculate the velocity by itself and then show it in the velocity histogram. This is going to be, this is going to be a one-stop shop and I'm really excited for that. 
Uh, in the meantime, I just added uh, a panel. So this is what you can do here. You can add a panel. So let's say we do one at the top uh, where you could add, uh, for example, another histogram if I had the rear um, the rear sensor and you can, so right now it just duplicates the, the channel. Um, and when you get to that point, it gets a little bit tricky because you have to you have to tell it whether you want all of the same channels in all the panels or if you want different channels in different panels. And you just always right click. Right clicking on all of the, the windows in AIM is always going to give you a lot of options. It's always good to look at your settings. Uh, so you can set up whether you want the bars in different direction, how many uh, bars you want. The more, the better for the higher number, the better for histograms, um, because higher resolution is is going to give you more information, obviously. Um, and then if you wanted to um, use different channel in every panel, this is this is really what you have to look at. So choose with uh, which channels to display. So here I decide that I want another channel as my histogram. And so it does appear and then you can actually just go and I don't have the rear right now, but if I wanted it, um, you can decide to show it in the second histogram right here. So obviously it's not gonna show because I don't have it, but let's say I want a, oh, that's the second histogram. Or oh, you can also rename them, uh, showing histogram. So this, this is a histogram of position, which could be interesting if you'd like to as well. Yep. Um, and then in this case, hide in the histogram. There, you there, go. there is a ton um, of power that is being built into the suspension analysis function. And yeah. uh, Rick, Rick is talking about a couple of questions there about some details. When when we release that into the production, Emiliano and I, and, and we'll probably bring in a suspension expert as well. And we're going to talk about how to actually not just the functionality, but uh, uh, dig into how to read the data a little bit more. I think mm -hmm. that's a little outside of our scope on, on this particular webinar. Exactly. Um, so I think unless there are more questions, that's well, it. There's, there's one more thing that I really, really like when it comes to suspension analysis. And you've yeah. got the... Um, one of the things that's the, that AIM does really, really well and always has, uh, if you, you talked about zooming in and, and seeing oh, the, yes. that time distance bar, it is the what you see is what is being applied to every other function. So uh, she just is zooming in and out and seeing the bigger picture of all of this data. And uh, But one of the cool things that I do is I really work on my track map segments. And then if you zoom out a little bit again, Chloe, where you can see several of them, one of the coolest things I do is I make sure that the corners are set up that I might want to study in suspension. And then you mm -hmm. simply double click on one of those uh, color bars and it jumps right to that segment. Now your your histograms and your your uh, frequency analysis is all set up to that exact data. So right. that is yeah. a that is a powerful, powerful tool. And if you don't want to look at everything, but only want to focus on that one lab and then just compare labs, it will it will overlay yeah. and um, just show you the different colors. So this is really cool. I mean, when I'm looking at suspension, usually I'm looking at an entire session um, because I think it's just the more data, the better for for that type of um, uh, that type of analysis. But uh, sometimes you just want to see if uh, things are repeatable. So it's and, or, uh, or you have a writer that comes in and says, "Boy, over in turn three, that mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if it's bottoming out or if I don't know if it's if I need more compression right there. So if you zoom into just that corner, boom, it's real easy to get there. But generally speaking, you want more data to be averaging out for those for those settings, obviously. Exactly. Very cool. There we go. Okay. So I will give it back to you. Okay, let's let's do that. We're getting pretty close to ending things here. The um, uh, that was very interesting, and I hope uh, as I start to share my screen here, I hope that uh, some of you may want to uh, to to let's make sure it's uh, there. We go. Um, Chloe has been nice enough to share that data and share that user profile. And while she didn't talk about inside of their uh, any math channels, she has uh, a couple of math channels that she's built that are that are shared as well. And those are uh, links that are right here in the in the in the chat box. Or those of you that are reading later, you can grab that data 
uh, user profiles and math channels uh, and import those into your Ray Studio 3 and follow along exactly what she was just doing. And, and even if you don't have shock sensors right now, you've got some data with it and you can begin to uh, begin to learn and understand. Again, as of right now, Ray Studio 3 production um, does not have that function working, but if you want to, it will be soon. But if you want to uh, get the beta version, it's working there. And all of those same files can just be brought in. So perfect. Um, well, that was that was very interesting and, and uh, learned a lot about the hardware for the ACC, uh, how, how it's how it's hooked up, how it's connected, how it's configured, talked about calibrating of uh, of the shock sensors. Of course, the pressure sensors don't need to be calibrated and then some post uh, post session uh, data analysis. So it was uh, I, I thought that was a, a perfect way of looking at it. Yeah, it was motorcycle data. And that's a big part of what's going on in these in this particular um, solo and ACC combination is very, very popular uh, in the motorcycle world right now. Just uh, uh, many, many more of them coming into that world uh, uh, all the time, virtually every day. So that uh, uh, very, very good. Um, but all of that same information can be used by somebody that's in a sports car or a UTV or a, or, a, or you know a, a snowmobile that's that's racing using this these these exact same tools. So all, always good, always uh, always enjoyable, uh, always great to have uh, Chloe join and doing this and being a part of our AIM support team. On top of it all, we we appreciate it. Uh, there's a lot of work being done by a lot of folks that go out to tracks every day and and uh, and, and support the users. And Chloe's one of those as well. So we thank you again, Chloe, for that. The, You're um, welcome. Uh, this, this is a video that, uh, this is a webinar that we are recording. And as soon as we get done, I go to work and, uh, and get it converted and get it up onto to YouTube. There's a, a slide of what, uh, of, of what we have up there, just a ton of videos. This one will just be the next one. Currently uh, over 230 videos that we have up there about uh, different AIM uh, questions and 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 uh, different support topics and of course all the webinars that we've been doing since 2020 so uh, all of that stuff is up there and this one will be up there shortly uh, talked a little a minute ago about customer support uh, we have a couple of these sprinter vans that are out there running around at different events chloe grabs one occasionally and uh and and goes to different events uh, if you have any questions about your 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 aim hardware or software there's an 800 number there that you can call uh, at almost any time uh, many of you have uh, cell phone numbers of support folks you certainly have email addresses uh, that uh, that we're here to help so uh, make sure you give us a holler but uh, it's really important to all of us that uh, uh, you, that you don't struggle. If there's a, a small little question that we can get you uh, answered on and get you moving on, it, it unlocks all sorts of doors that uh, that makes the products uh, even more valuable to you. And uh, you've invested uh, you know some time and money into them. We want to make sure you get as much out of it as we can. So keep that in mind. Give us a holler if there's any any questions at all. Uh, we do these once uh, every couple uh, once every month uh, last Tuesday of every month the next one will be put it onto your calendar November 28th uh, 2023 we uh, we don't have a uh, it's to be determined. I have some ideas in our mind that uh, Emiliano and I are talking and hopefully we'll, we'll uh, do that, but we rest assured we will have something and it'll be something of, uh, of, of good interest that uh, to everybody. So November 28th is our next one and uh, make sure you join us then. The um, some contact information. Uh, there's Chloe with the van there at uh, uh, on the left out at, uh, did you say it was Chukwala? Did you, did you tell yeah, me? Yeah, it's Chukwala. Okay. The, um, uh, there's some contact information for Chloe if you have other questions that you might want to ask her uh, and her engineering firm that she's uh, that she's out there uh, working on things and answering questions and building things and and uh, she does videos like uh, like uh, like these and and other engineering details as well so uh, there's a contact information for her if you have a question that I might be able to help handle for you uh, my email address is down at, down there at the bottom please and give us Chloe, please give us a contact Yes, yep. Chloe, go ahead. Sorry, I will be at Chakwala for uh, for motorcyclists that are uh, eager to race during the the off season. I will be at Chakwala for CVMA round two, which I think is the seventeenth, eighteenth of November. Ah, that's your next November. public appearance, huh? So, yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect. The uh, so there's some contact information for you. Um, there's uh, are you going to go to the PRI show this year, Chloe? 
I will be there. Yes. Perfect. Uh, the uh, something we haven't talked about yet on the, during the webinars, but every year we're at the PRI show uh, in in Indianapolis. We're going to be there again this year. The picture there on the right is Chloe at the at the at the AIM booth and the at the PRI show. So if you want to meet some of uh, some of your favorite AIM support staff, um, uh, come join us there and stop by the the PRI show. I don't have the booth number yet, but it's easy to to get to, and we'll, we'll probably talk more about that at the next uh, next webinar as we're getting close to it. So I appreciate that. Uh, Chloe, again, thanks for thanks for joining us on your sixth sixth webinar. And I think there was one other one that I brought you in for just a slow little bit where we talked about different user profiles and such where you were part of a group. But um, so uh, but uh, I know it's a lot of extra work to put these together and and come uh, and come and, and, and chat with the folks this way. So I do appreciate that. Is there anything else you'd like to kind of uh, uh, share with us on on as we're kind of closing this one out? No, thank you for having me again. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next one already. I know we have a lot of ideas of topics. So um, yeah, we'll, I'll be back and uh, I'll see everybody at the track. Perfect. Looking forward to it. Thanks everybody for coming. And uh, again, if you have any questions or anything, give, give us a holler. We'll be out there ready for you and, uh, and, uh, and ready to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks everybody. And we will see you, uh, see you on the next one in a month. Talk to you soon.